Hi and welcome to another Tabitha's Glass Emporium YouTube video. We're filming outside so sometimes there's some background noise, I apologise for that. But today we're bringing you our first project using our fantastic new tropical sea marini that we've come up with. Um, and here it is, it's making a kind of panel and using the corals that we made in our other video and all of our beautiful fish and other undersea marini like starfish and sea anemones and shells and we've got the turtles and the rays and all these fantastic marini and these corals that we showed how, how to make before and turning them into this wonderful textured panel so let's see how i do it so i was inspired with it to do these projects um by all these new marini we've made we made this fantastic collection of undersea marini and i just wanted to kind of quickly showcase them off to um, to you guys. So we have four different fishes so far and we'll be adding more to those. We've got um, clownfish and various other fish that I don't know their names. I think that's a batfish. That's a, something other kind of batfish and I think that's an emperor something or other. Um, and we've got two shells. Um, we've got starfish. We've got turtles. We've got kind of two different types of anemones. One standing up and one sort of sitting looking down. We've got seahorses and we've got um, eagle ray. So that's what kind of the idea behind it. Now I did another YouTube video, which you'll need to watch to learn how to make the corals for this. And you need to make a load of corals and then you can start on, the, um, start on this project. So now I want to um, pre-fuse a base layer with powders. I tried doing this without pre-fusing and it's just too much of a fiddly piece. You want to get your powders tack fused on or sintered on first before you start adding your coral. It's, uh, it's, it, was, it was a nightmare, <laughs> put it that way. So um, I've cut a piece of um, Tecta, 40 centimetres long, or, or and um, sort of this wide. It was not, it was making sure it fit my nice wave mould um, long enough so it would sit well on that um, and give me a nice sort of canvas size. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is put down some sort of sandy area at the bottom using French vanilla. If I had um, a, a non-reactive this sort of colour of glass like the ivory I'd probably use it but I don't have it in powder I only have French vanilla so I'm just going to go with that. I want to put down a fairly good layer of glass. You want to sort of give the glass a kind of a good coating so that you're going to see the colour well as you sort of look through it on the wave. So I'm saying kind of my sandy area is about one third of the bottom. I might come up a bit higher on this end. I've got an idea of being higher on one side of the project, maybe. bit like this. So that's my French vanilla. Then I want to put a sort of base layer of powder at the, the back. Just This is non-reactive, it's also a kind of line between the French vanilla and the blues because a lot of the blues I want to use will be at reactive to, with the French vanilla. So powder blues, non-reactive. It's uh... So as I said, putting down some powder blue. And then I want to use so I want the, it to go from a kind of lighter area in the middle to um, it being kind of darker at the edges. So it sort of feels like that. So I'm going to take some light turquoise in the middle and put more of that down. Again, you've got to really build this up. And do you want to be able to actually see the colours. You know, a way of making it so you can you don't have to worry so much would be to do it on white. But the is cheaper. So I sort of feel that using white is better. Um, I'm going to go to from um, that to a, a light scion. Turquoise is transparent, light scion is not. So, you know, I am going from an opal to a transparent. Um, and then I want to do, 
keep going. I'm going to use a, some light sky blue. The edges. A slightly darker tone. A bit purpley though. So I might, with the light sky blue, add a bit of turquoise just to bring it into the, bring down the sort of purple tone in it. And then just going to put some midnight, which is very dark at the right at the edges. Just to give a bit of darkness right at the edges. So this will go in the kiln on attack fuse and um, we will see how it is when it comes out. Um, just before it goes in the kiln, I'm going to add some of my favourite brown and white coarse for it just at the bottom, just to add a bit of texture. Um, most of this will be covered up by coral anyway, but it just adds a little bit of extra, you know, texture on for the areas which are not covered by coral. Um, and so then that can go in. So here is this piece out of the kiln. Um, having thought about it overnight, I've decided I'm not going to try and slump this. This piece is going to have lots and lots of different levels. Um, annealing it once after a tack fuse, very long and slow, I think is going to put enough stress on the glass to try and slump it with all those different levels into a shape is just asking for disaster. It's asking for the piece to break and having put all this work into it, I don't want to do that. I decided instead, because I want stuff to hang off the bottom and be able to hang off the top, that I'm going to put some metal hooks in it so it can hang up on the wall. So I'm just going to use some glue. Put these down like this, put a bit more glue on top of them. And put some hooks in. And I want to try and make sure my hooks are kind of equidistant from either and uh, taking something like that and saying that's the distance there that's the distance there that's pretty good um i will also just add a piece of fiber paper under each hook helps hold the hook in place and although this is um Nichromium wire, which shouldn't affect your kiln shelves. I just think it's better policy when you're putting metal on the kiln shelf to just put some fibre paper under underneath to um, avoid any uh, contamination of the shelf. Um, next, we want to think about putting on corals. So I've got all the corals that I made before. And I'm going to slowly start putting them on. Um, I am going to use glue to hold these in place. Uh, I had a vague kind of pra practice run to sort of think where I want stuff. So I'm probably going to kind of follow that pattern a bit. Um, if I can remember it, because it did look aesthetically pleasing. But I'm going to put basically corals on here and load it up. I will probably put some on top of others like that, which is why it's going to have lots of different layers and why this piece is going to be so tricky to anneal. So here it is done. Um, the only thing I need to say is, so some of these pieces are sitting kind of over the other pieces and I put little pieces of tector behind just to hold up um, this a little bit so it doesn't kind of totally fall into the gap behind and maybe gives a slightly 3, 3D effect. Then the other thing you need to notice is some stuff is hanging off the edge here. So I'm just going to cut some 3mm fibre paper and put it in place underneath. Sometimes it will need a double layer um, just to hold these pieces up off the bottom. In fact, because of the the um, hooks, I probably should have used six mil, but I've got three mil here now, so I'm just gonna carry on with the three mil and hope for the best. Okay, that one is sort of halfway between three and six mil. 
uh, I'll just use a bit of three more there. So it's just for these bits hanging off the edge so that they kind of have a little bit of support. Um, I like this whole kind of feeling of the stuff hanging off the edge. Um, but I don't want it sort of folding over the edge. I just want it hanging that same with this one here. And I've got another little bit here. So I'll just check I've got all of those sorted before I put it in the kiln. They're looking a little bit messy at the moment, but I'll get them tidy in a minute. So next, we want to do the important part, the fish and the shells. So I'm just sort of going to, you know, be creative. And um, using a blob of glue, just put fish on where and how I feel. I definitely want to put some fish in this little, oh, if I can get him, him, her, it, and put some, and then poking behind this bit of coral here. That's the great thing about corals. Problem is, we have a girl who works here called Coral. So we've been talking a lot about Coral over the last few weeks. And I think she's getting a bit sick of hearing her name all the time. Um, Now I'm literally just going through pot by pot and going, I'm going to add some here. And there, that shell, pretty shell down here. Another one maybe over here. It can also be a shell or a little bit of fan coral. Um, some anemone. Anemone there. Oh, no. Isn't entirely glued in place, so I'm just going to maybe another anemone there. Oh, we definitely need a seahorse or two. Put a seahorse down at that gap. Turtles, I have some turtles swimming in the maybe one way off in the background up here. The little turtle humming swim. Let's put my rays in now while I'm thinking about it. Get and just put kind of. Three rays and the thing about the rays is they look much better if you can put a black string of tail on them. Rays have tails. And the tails need to be quite long to make it look unproportional. Proportional? Proportionate even. Um, I love these, which I like. And the enemy blobs. Another shell. There. I've got to put some clownfish in now. Where would a clownfish be? I think we'll try and put kind of there, maybe a little one. Hmm. Oh, quite guess it maybe there. near the anemone. Maybe another little one by the anemone too. You can see you have such fun with this. Where am I going to put things? And kids, oh my god, my kids cannot wait. They were like, where can we have a go, mummy? I was like, after I've had some fun, my turn first. Um, oh, fish. oh, starfish. Can't forget the starfish. Absolutely love the starfish. 
I've got smaller ones that can kind of go in the background. Maybe not. Maybe a starfish wouldn't be there. And it's the contrasting colours I love, which just work so brilliantly. I'm just checking I've got. No, I know there's one more fish. Oh, here it is. Over here, and maybe a little one. Some little ones. Yeah. And that's the thing, as you're seeing the little cracks, Travis's I'm gonna put a, another one like that, or maybe an anemone like that. So that could be that clownfish and it's an anemone. between anemones and starfish I feel You can carry on and carry on. It's hard to do it. I'm doing it upside down, makes it kind of hard to see what I'm doing, but I think that's looking pretty good. I'm probably going to add a few more fish. Um, I quite like to sort of where you see gaps. Um, it's quite nice to sort of think, oh, a fish would like to hang out in that spot there. Uh, and it'll be exciting when we have the even more fish to put in our reef. A couple more there. I think that's good. You know, you can you can go more or you can go less. It's entirely up to you how many fish you want to put on your coral reef. So this is going to go in, guys. This is a six-hour anneal on this. It's a very long, slow anneal because this is masses of layers. It's also going to be quite a light fuse because I don't want to go too heavy um, and I want to keep as much definition as I can on things like this. Um, so yeah, it will be very light tack, long, long anneal, and uh, praying to the kiln gods that everything comes out all right, because I think it looks amazing. So here it is out of the kiln. I think this is fantastic, guys. I'm so pleased. Look at all this lush coral. It's just, oh, totally, totally what I wanted. Um, and our fishes and all our marini just look beautiful. These are all available on sale now, um, individually, or you can buy them as a bundle. Uh, as kind of under the sea tropical mix. Um, I really love how this turned out. If I wanted to slump it, I just would be scared about giving it a go. There's so many different layers in here. I, it's a six hour anneal as it is. If you wanted to slump it, you would want to go even longer than that. Um, we now have these hooks available on sale. You can buy 10 of these hooks. These are nichromium hooks, very safe to use in your kilns. Um, 10 of them are 4, uh, 4.95 euros, um, so you know, get those if you want. Um, and yeah, I just really love this project and really love this idea and I can't wait to see what everyone else comes up with using the ideas here and uh, maybe buying some of our Marini and putting them in. So if you've liked this video, please subscribe.